Today on Focal Point, we're going to learn what it's like to host the CCP TV show, Burton Klein Speaks, with Professor Burton Klein. Learn how the CCP community feels about the issue of Malaysia Airlines, MH370, and take a look at the Entrepreneurs Club. Stay with us. Hi, welcome to Focal Point on CCP TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I am Darlene Muntz, a student in the Communication Arts Curriculum. We have another exciting show for you today. First, I am here with Professor Burton Klein and host of CCP TV's program, Burton Klein Speaks. Professor Klein is a well-known speaker and philanthropist here in the Philadelphia area. Professor Klein is the former president of the prestigious Schoolman's Club of Philadelphia and the English Club of Philadelphia. Many of his published articles appear in the social studies and the science teacher. With ethos, pathos, and logos, Klein's highly unique presentations feature substance, the dynamics of power speaking, and a blend of humor to touch the hearts of his vast following. Welcome, Bert. Thank you very much, Darlene. Tell us a little about Bert and Klein Speaks. Well, one day I had the pleasure to be with the wonderful head of this CCP TV 53 station. And I told him that I do speak now that I've semi-retired and speak on cruise ships and churches and colleges and universities and whatever. And he said to me, would you be willing to come to speak at a place named Community College of Philadelphia, CCP TV 53? And my mouth smiled the way Aww. yours is smiling right now. And here I is. Does it take a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort to be a host of a popular program? Well, to be honest with you, and I know you want honesty, yes. my 1,018 presentations I've been doing for over 20 years. And of course, I tweak them and make them more up to date, but I did not have to do extra work. It just sort of, if I may, comes naturally. Has it been what you expected? Even more, because there are people uh, that come up to my wife and me as we walk down the street, mm -hmm. and they say some things that are very complimentary, and it's very, very nice to hear that. Mm -hmm. Everyone likes to hear something like that. But it's been very satisfying, because I hope that those items of which I speak give information and knowledge to the viewing audience. That is my goal. What do you hope the audience will learn from viewing the program? Well, some people have even said to us, to my wife and to me, mm -hmm. my goodness, as a result, when you talk about travel, we're going to go to those places. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about grammar, I never knew it was between you and me and not between you and I. And as a result, I think some people are learning some things. Also, there's some people that might be falling asleep. I can <laughs> understand that too. <laughs> Tell us what we can expect this season. Well, there are more programs that are going to come on CCP mm -hmm. TV 53. There was about six months worth of programs that were taped and those deal with a litany of subjects. Uh, the Luddite world, women as CEOs, mm -hmm. just to give you an example of two. Okay. Thanks for being with us, Bert. We're looking forward to the new season of Burton Klein Speaks. Likewise, all in capital letters. Thank you. Okay, now let's hear what CCP students think about the missing Malaysia airline plane flight MH370. How does the whole plane just go missing? Whatever happened on board, two of the key communication systems were disabled. I know they have that little black box that's supposed to be able to be detected, 
pretty much anywhere. It's like almost virtually indestructible. It might be a technical problem. Catastrophic malfunction mid-air went down and we'll never recover it. I think it probably crashed in the ocean somewhere. We can't prove anything until we find the plane's black box. My mind immediately snapped to terrorism. I think that's an unfortunate byproduct of the society we're living in right now. Somebody had motives. So you got to question, what's the motive? Why would somebody choose an airplane to just go missing? I mean, this could be like a new wave of threats. If you had an um, airplane that nobody knew you had, you could use it in an attack. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody said it was a terrorist thing. It could have been a hijacking. Two people on board with uh, stolen passports. The pilots could have been involved. A suicide attempt. As they found um, a sophisticated flight training system in the home of one of the pilots. And when the plane took off, they were able to track it up until a certain point. Once you lost that connection, that was your best opportunity to figure out what was going on with that plane. As far as technology is gone, I think we've done everything that we can to prevent something like this from happening. They could have definitely done something earlier. I mean, the minute it went off a grid, it was their job to try to find out what's going on. I think that the Malaysian Airlines and the uh, Malaysian government need to tighten their security restrictions. We enforce you know, the security in the airport. Something bad happens, which means now we need to implement something that either takes away more rights or liberties from citizens who take these things for granted because we need to keep their best interests in order. There's a trade-off between security and convenience. I don't know how most people feel about that, but that's the safest option. I think that they're doing as much as they can to try to find the planes. And it's a good thing that many countries are in this in the search, so we have enough people to, you know, to find success at the end of this. You can say sorry a thousand times a million ways, but that doesn't replace what these people have lost. They've lost family members that they'll probably never see again. Between like a chunk of metal and between the people that died in that crash, um, the people are much more important. To the families of the people who, who, you know, they've just lost a loved one. I hope they can remain strong and knowing that um, at some point, maybe not right now, some sort of justice will come to them. These people lost something that's more valuable than even money or reparations could be for something like this. My prayers definitely go out to that family. I would say that the only thing that is just to pray. That's a tough pill to swallow either way. You know, you, at the end of the day, you just want to have some sort of clarity and know what happened to these people, because at this point, we don't know. It shouldn't have happened. Wow, wasn't that interesting? Did you know that Community College of Philadelphia has an entrepreneur's club? Watch this. You often hear people say, there's a great need in our country for jobs. But what they should say is there's a great need in our country for entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs create small business, which in turn provide jobs to the local community. Maurice Sampson is the Assistant Professor of Marketing and Management. He has his bachelor's from Bishop College and an MED from Antioch University. He also teaches an entrepreneurial course here at CCP. I teach marketing management and entrepreneurship courses. Entrepreneurs are people who have a mindset that they want to go into business or they want to start a venture that grows and grows and grows. Sort of have a, a two-sided, two sides of a coin where one side is a small business person who wants to go into business set on, with an idea that they want to develop, but they're not interested in it growing, they just want to have a job for themselves, so to speak, maybe like a barber for one or two others. But an entrepreneur is, is a person who has a, a commitment to creating a company with the idea of that company growing and growing into something large. The benefits from that is the number of jobs that are created. And when you talk about entrepreneurs, more often than not, you'll always hear that. Entrepreneurs, small business, and creating a lot of jobs. Students at Community College of Philadelphia can obtain an entrepreneurship proficiency certificate. The 12 credit program is ideal for students who are interested in starting their own business. They are driven by creativity, with the intent on creating organizations that survive and to do great things. Amazing. That's just one of the many interesting clubs we have here at the college. Well, that's it for today. 
I want to thank my guest, Professor Burton Klein, for joining us today, and I want to thank you for tuning in. You have been watching Focal Point, the Community College of Philadelphia magazine show on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. All segments for Focal Point are produced by the students in the digital video production curriculum. I'm Darlene Muntz, a student in Communication Arts Curriculum here at CCP. See you next time. <laughs>